Welcome back to another edition of Research Fantasy Presents, our NBA Fantasy Baller DFS edition <laughs> for this Thursday, April 20th, 2017. We are here to break down uh, the three games on the NBA slate tonight. Pretty straightforward stuff. I'm going to try to keep it short and simple as I have to move on with things today. First up, we have Cleveland visiting Indiana. Cleveland has not looked good defensively. They've won games by 1 in 7 points. Not what you'd expect out of the number 2 seed uh, and reigning champions. I think this is going to be a problem as the games transition to Indiana. Um, looking at the Cavs side of things, really it comes down to the big 3 uh, with the... <coughs> Focus probably going LeBron, Love, and Kyrie. Kyrie feels just a little overpriced at 9K. Behind them, you're looking at Tristan Thompson as a punt option. He's been decent uh, thus far this series. He's made value one game. He didn't uh, in the other. But a lot of times in these situations, it's just about lineup construction and that price point could put you in a position where you're able to get the other players that you need to be in your lineup in your lineup. Uh, moving over to the Indiana side of things, we've got Paul George, who's going to be the guy that we want to get in our lineups um, each and every time. He's the top producer on this team. Uh, started out really well. Jeff Teague offensively came around in the last game. Um, still a little to be desired in terms of his assist total, but that's what happens when you have Paul George on the floor and he's kind of doing a little bit of everything. That'll eat away with uh, from Jeff Teague's production a little bit. And it's not just about points, obviously, in Daily Fantasy. It's about the whole package, so I think you have to pay attention there. Miles Turner, I mean, I'm hoping that this is a turning point for him. Uh, decent first game, really wasn't there the second game um needs to be a little better defend uh, offensively should be averaging a double double in this series but he's not doing it <laughs> eventually he should come out of his shell makes for a decent pun option tonight uh Thaddeus Young due to the ability for steals I mean he's a guy that's that definitely gets propelled up my list because LeBron James does not take care of the basketball he's going to give you a lot of turnovers Thad Young could end up with 10 points literally just off of steals in this game. Last person I'm going to touch on would be uh, Lance Stevenson. He's been productive off of the bench thus far, and his price isn't uh, overwhelming throughout the industry. Moving on to Toronto at Milwaukee. This series is tied one apiece. I'm sure Toronto would have thought and would have hoped that they would be leading this series moving into the games in Milwaukee. That isn't the case. On the Toronto side of things, we saw Kyle Lowry come alive last game. His price has jumped as a result. Still a good play, and you just have to get to the point of realizing that these guys aren't going to hit 5X all the time in the playoffs. DeMar DeRozan, uh, he's a steady contributor. Again, he's a guy probably not, <coughs> not likely to hit 5X, but at the same time should be one of the guys below 10k that's producing on a relatively regular basis. Serge Ibaka sees a little bit of a pri <coughs> price drop. Excuse me, I can't get rid of this cough. Serge Ibaka sees a little bit of a price drop, and it's a little bit ridiculous as well. His assist totals were inflated in the last game. Six assists is not something Serge is going to do too much, um, but he also had, you know, probably around a little less what he averages in rebounds. I think 5,800 is a great price for him. I'm going to keep buying in. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas, risky play. I don't mind it because eventually he's going to play 30 minutes in this series because he's going to catch fire. But in terms of Damari Carroll, P.J. Tucker, Patrick Patterson, these guys are all going to see minutes and be relatively useless in terms of fantasy. Moving on to Milwaukee tonight. Giannis is probably the top play on the slate, I think. Uh, he's just been dominant thus far. His price is very fair for what he's been doing. I think he's a full go for me. Chris Middleton and uh, Greg Monroe, slightly under 6K on FanDuel. Both guys that I want to have some exposure to because they can put up points quickly. And Monroe needs to because of the poison known as Jason Kidd. And <clears throat> the only other guy really looking at here, Malcolm Brogdon, didn't have a great game last time but uh 
you know, that's the deal with him. He kind of fluctuates all over the place. Definitely has 30-point upside if things go his way. I'll, I'll also talk a little bit of Tony Snell. Tony Snell isn't the worst option. He's going to see pretty good amount of minutes. He saw 31 and 24 minutes. He's going to surprise you every now and again with 25 or 30 fantasy points just because of grit and being on the court for that long. So I don't mind him if you need to punt today. Lastly, we have potentially the most boring game of the night. San Antonio takes a 2-0 lead into Memphis to take on the Grizzlies, who have been scuffling a bit. Um, San Antonio starts and ends with Kawhi Leonard right now. Actually, I take that back. It, it, there's no way that I can consider Giannis the top play of the game when we have Kawhi Leonard sitting here at 8600 That's just far, far too cheap. For Kawhi, figuring that Memphis should be in this a little more with this being a home game. That should mean more activity by Kawhi. He makes an excellent play. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, Pau Gasol, Tony Parker, guys I'd be looking at, but they all come off as more of punt options because of how Memphis limits possessions, and they're all going to Kawhi. So... Aldridge is tough at 6,100 to say, well, he's a he's a good punt option. You don't want to be spending that money for a punt option. He did have 30 fantasy points in his first game, so the upside is still there. Uh, Pau Gasol, not seeing a ton of time yet. Um, throw 25 and 30 minutes actually isn't bad. But he just hasn't been producing like you'd like. I think eventually that comes to an end. Tony Parker, same deal. I mean, he's cheap. He's That's one of the reasons we're looking at him, but he's going to just kind of vary. 23, 20, that's not a horrible... Uh, fantasy production at his price so I'll take it maybe I'll consider Danny Green um, because of the amount of time that he's going to see on the court outside of that I think I'm good on these San Antonio guys moving to Memphis it's going to be Mike Conley Mark Gasol for the most part it just seems like they're alternating when one of them is going to have a big game it could come together where both do at home. The prices on them are really good still, so I don't mind going there. Zach Randolph priced extremely well on FanDuel. Uh, played <coughs> 36 minutes in the last game, had a double-double. Definitely think we could see the same thing today. Outside of that, not a whole lot that I'm really into. Vince Carter could end up being a decent play at 3,500. Uh, he's seeing... Pretty good minutes, and the problem is with him, he just isn't doing enough on the court, but eventually his shot's going to fall. Will it be in this series? Tough to say, but he's a good speculative tournament punt to try to differentiate your lineups a little bit. All right, thank you for joining us today. Make sure to hit subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Head over to researchfantasy.com, sign up for our NBA mailing list. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Research and Win, and join us again tomorrow. We'll